week 11 of the fantasy basketball season. And here's a few forwards you should add on waivers this week. The first guy is Jared Vanderbilt of the Minnesota Timberwolves. So Vanderbilt, we've seen flashes from him this season. And on the year, he's ranked 166 is Vanderbilt. 6.1 points a game, 5.9 rebounds, 1.6 assists, 1.1 steals a game. 60% from the field, but only 55% from the foul line but the last couple weeks his games picked up and the minutes have picked up he's ranked 166 in that time is Vanderbilt 7.8 points a game 7 rebounds 1.3 assists 75 percent from the foul line and an amazing 68 percent from the field for Vanderbilt so Vanderbilt he's been up and down like I said the minutes have been inconsistent but when the minutes are up there for him he puts up huge stat lines, and he's a guy that's going to be great in field goal. He's going to get some rebounds. He could score the basketball at a decent rate, and also he's a good guy for getting some steals in fantasy basketball. On February 24th at Chicago, 16 points, 6 rebounds, an assist, and 4 steals. February 27th at Washington, 11 points, 12 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 blocks. And then last night versus Phoenix, it was a blowout ball game. Where the Timberwolves lost, he only played 15 minutes in that one. And 2 points, 5 rebounds, a steal, and a block. So like I said, Vanderbilt, he needs those extended minutes to put up extended numbers. And in that February 24th game, he had 34 minutes. And the 27-23, and last night only 15. But if he gets extended minutes, he's going to be valuable to fantasy teams. And he's still definitely worth the pickup, in my opinion, even after that bad ball game last night. And he's available... In 79% of fantasy leagues. The next forward to get on waivers this week is Derek Jones Jr. of the Portland Trailblazers. Last week, he was on the waiver wire list. And this week, he's made it once again is Derek Jones. And he's playing pretty good here for this Portland team on the season. He's ranked 149 with 8.3 points a game, 4.9 rebounds, 1.1 blocks a game, 61% from the foul line. Which definitely hurts your percentages, but 50% from the field in the last few weeks now. He's ranked 60th in this time with 12.5 points a game, 6.5 rebounds, 1.7 assists, 2 blocks a game, 1.23, 64% from the line, and 64% from the field. So Derek Jones, we know he's an athletic swing man. We know he can high fly. We've seen him in the dunk contests over the last couple seasons and his abilities. And he got a decent contract in this offseason with the Portland Trailblazers, and I think he's started just about every game for them this year, and he's putting up numbers, he does a little bit of everything, I know he's not a good three-point shooter, but he's going to give you blocks, he's going to give you some rebounds, he could score double digits points a game, and he could get a few assists as well, in the last few games he's been pretty good, February 22nd at Phoenix, 8 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 blocks, February 23rd at Denver, 18 points, 5 rebounds, 3 blocks, and 2 threes. And February 26th for him, 11 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists, a steal, 2 blocks, and a 3 at the Los Angeles Lakers. So he's giving you about 5 or 6 categories right now is Jones. And he's got a good field goal percentage as well. And it's a lot of dunks, a lot of putbacks for him. He could steal the basketball. He's a decent shot block. Three for a forward to average 1.1 a game this season, but two in the last few weeks. It's a good thing for Derek Jones. He's available still in a whopping 63% of fantasy leagues. So if you need a good combo forward here, he's a guy to go get. The next forward to get on waivers this week is Dylan Brooks of the Memphis Grizzlies. Every week it's a different story with Brooks, and this is what happens with players who are going to be up and down for fantasy teams and stuff. But Dylan Brooks, he's playing at a high level now. And the last couple games, he's playing good. A few weeks ago, I said to drop him. But that was more because of the postponements and a couple bad games in a row. But now he's putting things together, is Brooks. And he's having some good games on the season. He's ranked 158 with 15.5 points a game, 3.1 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 2 threes a game, 80% from the foul line. And 39% from the field. But in the last couple weeks, he's ranked 115 is Brooks with 14.6 points a game. 2.21 rebounds, 1.6 assists, 92% from the foul line, and 41% from the field. And Brooks, he's available still in 58% of fantasy leagues. And he's a player that's playing 
the 25, 30 minutes a game here for this Memphis team. And this Memphis team, they're trying to make it one of the last spots in the playoffs here. And Dylan Brooks, I think for them to do it, he's going to have to be a big part of this ball club. And right now, he's getting the minutes, like I said, and he's been producing February 25th versus the Clippers. 19 points, 2 rebounds, 3 three-pointers, a steal and a block. Then February 26th versus the Clippers again, 11 points, 2 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals and a block and a 3. And then last night in a crazy blowout victory where they beat the Rockets almost by 50 points. He had 8 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists, a steal and a 3. So Dylan Brooks, he's giving you 5 or 6 categories. The only thing he's really hurting fantasy owners in his field goal percentage but as the weeks go on I think that's something he definitely could improve and he's a guy to go out there and get on waves the next forward to get on waves is Shadiq Bay of the Detroit Pistons so Bay he's been a pretty impressive rookie so far this season and he's a player you should go out there and get in fantasy leagues he's gonna play a lot of games he's gonna play a lot of minutes now especially with Blake Griffin out of the lineup and getting ready to get traded or bought out from this Piston team. And he's available in 54% of fantasy leagues is Bay on the season. He's ranked 192 with 9.8 points a game, 4 rebounds and assists, 2.2 threes per game, 84% from the foul line, and the field goal percentage is troubling though at 41%. But the last few weeks he's ranked 77th in this time, 12.4 points a game. 5.6 rebounds, 1.6 assists, 3 threes a game. He's making him 40% from the field. So, Bay, he could score double digits. He could get some rebounds. And he's a good three-point baller for fantasy teams. So, Bay, he's definitely worth an ad. Like I said with the other Detroit Piston guys, they're not going to play the older guys anymore. They're going to look to trade them. And guys like Jackson Bay, Dennis Smith, they're going to play some good minutes here. For this Piston team and they're definitely worth an ad in the last three games it's been pretty decent for Bay. February 24th in New Orleans 13 points, 2 rebounds and assists to steal. February 26th versus Sacramento 17 points, 5 three-pointers he made in that ball game, 6 rebounds, 2 assists to steal and then last night versus New York his shooting percentage wasn't good though but he still had a decent game 10 points, 5 rebounds two three-pointers so Bay there's gonna be some ups and downs he's a rookie and you should expect that but if you need some three-point help and some instant scoring Bay is a forward to go out there and get the, and the fifth and final forward to get on waivers this week's Daniel House of the Houston Rockets of Daniel House he's getting more playing time now with this Rocket team and this Rocket team they're in a huge tailspin I believe losing 11 or 12 in a row now and at this point we're going to see the Rockets just keep selling guys off as the weeks come up, go on and the trade deadline gets closer in March 25th so 25 days away from the trade deadline we are. Daniel House I think he's a piece Houston's going to want to keep on their roster and he's a guy that definitely could produce and he's been producing on the season he's ranked 216 with 9.3 points a game. 4 rebounds, 2 assists, 1.6 threes, 37% from the field, which isn't good, and 77% from the line. But the last couple weeks, his rankings bumped up to 164 in that time. 11.7 points a game, 4.8 rebounds, 1.7 assists, 2 threes a game, 44% from the field, and 80% from the line. So House, we know he could score. We know he's a good 3-point shooter. And with this Rocket team, it's going to be a youth movement, like I said. And Daniel House, he's playing about 30, 35 minutes a game right now for this ball club. And hopefully it continues. And he's available in 79% of fantasy leagues. The last three games for House, February 24th at Cleveland. 14 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, 3 block shots, 2 threes. February 26th at Toronto, 11 points, 6 rebounds, and assists to steal, 3 threes. And then last night, like I said, in that blowout victory where they lost by 49 points, he only played 22 minutes, 5 points, 5 rebounds. And he shot an awful 2 of 11 from the field. But House, he's getting the opportunities. People thought he'd only be a 3-point shooter, but he could rebound. He could give you a decent percentage, and he could get you about a steal a game. So that's a few forwards I would look to add on the waiver wire here in Week 11 of the fantasy basketball season.